Garden suites are now legal in Toronto and adding one to your property can add significant value to your home. Whether you want to create a guest house, a home office, or an additional living space, a garden suite can be a fantastic option and addition. However, it's crucial to understand the specific requirements involved in this project. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics on which properties are best suited for garden suites. I'm at our Oakmount property today and wanted to use this location to demonstrate the requirements for garden suites for two reasons. One, this property is perfect for the addition of a garden suite, and two, we plan to add one to this site in the coming months. So let's dive in. Requirement number one, distance from the public street and the entrance. One of the initial requirements for adding a garden suite is the distance between the public street and the entrance. According to the local regulations, your garden suite must be at least 45 meters away from the public street. This is a fire safety issue so that if a fire were to break out, the fire department can service the garden suite. Additionally, ensure that there is a clear path of at least one meter width and a clearance height of 2.1 meters leading to the entrance of the garden suite. Requirement number two, tree preservation. When planning your garden suite, it's essential to respect the existing landscape, especially the trees. Toronto is crazy about their trees. You're not allowed to remove any trees during the construction process. Ensure that your design and construction plans accommodate the preservation of trees on your property. You may apply to injure or damage a tree during construction, but your application could be denied by urban forestry, which will stall or even cancel your project. Although we need more and more housing, maintaining trees contributes to the environmental balance and the aesthetic appeal of the garden suite. Number three, single unit restriction and no severance. Another requirement to consider is that garden suites are restricted to a single unit only. This means you cannot construct multiple units within the same structure. Additionally, there should be no severance, which means you cannot subdivide the property or sell the garden suite as a separate entity. The reason this rule exists is that the city wants to add additional density to neighborhoods without having to upgrade existing infrastructure like water, sewer, and electricity. One of the biggest challenges to most sites will be connecting the garden suite to the existing home, so take that into consideration when planning your suite. Requirement number four, basement and height restrictions. Good news, basements are permitted in garden suites. You have the flexibility to include a basement in your design to maximize the usable space. However, it's important to consider the height restrictions. When the garden suite is five meters away from another structure, the height is limited to four meters. If there's a distance of 7.5 meters or more between the garden suite and other buildings, you can have a height of up to six meters. This regulation ensures appropriate building proportions and visual harmony within the neighborhood. Requirement number five, setbacks and building openings. Setbacks play a crucial role in maintaining a balanced streetscape and ensuring adequate spacing between buildings. According to local regulations, the side yard setback for garden suites are 0.6 meters when there are no openings and 1.5 meters when there are openings such as doors and windows. For the rear setback, you need to maintain a distance of at least 1.5 meters from the property line at the back. These setbacks contribute to proper ventilation, lighting, and privacy for both your garden suite and your neighboring properties. Requirement number six, footprint and existing dwellings. The footprint of your garden suite must adhere to specific guidelines. It shall not exceed 40% of the rear yard or 60 square meters, whichever is less. This ensures that the size of the garden suite is in proportion to the available space and maintains the overall aesthetic appeal of the property. Additionally, if you have an existing dwelling on your property, it may be grandfathered in, meaning it can be exempt from certain requirements such as setbacks and distance from the existing dwelling. Requirement number seven, landscape requirements. To maintain the greenery and the visual appeal of the neighborhood, there are specific landscape requirements for garden suites. If your property lot is greater than six meters, you need to allocate 50% of the rear yard area for soft landscaping. If your lot is less than six meters, the requirement reduces to 25%. This ensures a harmonious blend of built structures and nature. Requirement number eight, parking. Garden suites do not require dedicated vehicle parking spaces. Instead, you must provide at least two bicycle parking spaces to encourage eco-friendly transportation options. Remember to consult with local authorities or professionals to ensure compliance with specific regulations in your area. If you've got questions about adding a garden suite to your property, you can leave those in the comment section below. Turn on the notification bell in order to be notified of future videos of the progress of our four garden suites and laneway suites that we're adding to our properties here in Toronto. 
Check out my website at darrenboros.com for courses related on how you can become a land developer yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.